Hello everyone and welcome to the Campus 101 special exam series. Today we're going to be talking about how to have an E in any exams that you're going to be taking. It's not important, it's not, you don't need a suicide to tell you that it's important for you to pass every exam that you take as a student. And not just pass, I'm talking about pass excellently with flying colors. And how do you pass with flying colors? That's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. My name is Dr. Piro, and I'm really glad to have you on this channel. Now, how do you score an A in every exam? There are going to be two parts to this video, how to prepare for an exam and how to perform in that exam. How to perform in the exam all right now we're going to focus on performance in the exam hall and now we expect that you are prepared for the exam you've given your best in the preparation you've read it. you've done all the assignment and now it's time to write the exam now how do you perform in an exam how do you perform in an exam the first thing you need to perform in an exam is what one you need an exam kit you need an exam kit most students are surprised when I ask them about the exam kits because they don't they've never heard what an exam kit is before now if you don't know if you are in the position of those people who don't know what an exam kit let me educate you today an exam kit contains pens and extra pens pencils sharpeners razor blade erasers rulers and every other writing material that you're going to need in that exam, including the math sets, if you are a science slash mathematics student, is going to require you to have a calculator and a wristwatch. This is what it means to have an exam kit. This exam kit helps you to prepare so that when you have two pens and one fails you, you don't have to you know, think about it immediately, you switch your pens. You have two pencils, and the way we sharpen our pencils in the exam, I hope you know that it's different. We sharpen our pencils when we go for the exam on two sides. We sharpen it on two sides because <laughs> we have an eraser. And secondly, so that when it breaks away, we don't have to start sharpening them all over again. Immediately, we just flip to the other side, and then we start, we continue writing in the exam hall. We need a razor blade, a sharpener, and eraser, so that in case in the worst case scenarios, we can have all this put together. An eraser to help you clean, a ruler to help you draw straight lines, a math set to help you do construction and every other thing you probably need. A calculator that will help you, you know, do your manipulation when it comes to numbers and all these kind of things. And then a wristwatch to help you keep time. The next thing is, and we've already mentioned this, but you need a timepiece. You need a timepiece to help you keep time. If you have five questions in an exam and you have 15 minutes, you have five questions and you have 15 minutes to answer them. Every wise student here would know that to tackle this, you have to give each question what? Now someone will say 10 minutes. No, you don't do that. You give nine minutes to every question so that when you are done with your five questions, the one minute that has accumulated over time will give you five minutes in which you can revise. This is what it means to be time conscious in your examination now if you are performing in an exam then you must also make sure that you stick to the time when the time of nine minutes per question is done it's good to stop that question and go on to the next one so that you can touch all the questions also please when you want to perform in an exam it's so important that you, you read the instructions of that exam various exams come with different instructions some have compulsory questions that have higher marks. Some have questions that you should answer with particular styles. So it is important, it is, it is, it is the most important thing to make sure you read the instructions clearly that have been stated in the question paper for that exam. This is how we perform in every examination. The fourth thing I'm going to tell you about when you are preparing to score an A in an examination is the fact that all students going into the examination must not go in hungry. You must have eaten something, so you have to have energy when you are going in for the exam. The reason why most students have brain block, they have complaints of forgetting, of having nothing to write, or being scared in the exam is because they've not eaten for hours. Most of them read and read and read and then they forget to eat. And when they, when they go into the exam hall, their brain does not have enough energy to be able to think and produce the answers. So it's important that you eat something. It should be light, but it's important that you eat something before you go for the exam. This way, you are sound physically. You have the energy to be able to think properly in that examination. Now, I'm going to also tell you that when you are going into the exam and you want to take an exam, it is important that you are, you are, you are, wise in the usage of your question your answer booklet 
Most students think they know how to answer exam questions. But we're going to take a test now, a two-minute test, and then we're going to see how is how students, you know, fully student answer question and how a wise student is supposed to answer question. Now, assuming I ask you in the exam that what is this? This is your question one in my exam. What is this? Now, some student is going to answer my question that this is a pen. And then they move on to the next question. If you do this, that means you are no, you have not seen the campus one one exam special videos. Now, this is how we answer this question when you say this is a what is this? Now, a wise student will say that this is a blue colored pen with a gold can you see that with a gold hook this student will not stop here he will go on to write because in the exam hall we don't take away anything back home we make sure you write everything you know and even give them a little extra all right the student will also go on to say that this pen is also now i gave you the pen so you can try it okay has blue ink you can also tell me that this pen is a ballpoint pen as you can see the ink is a ballpoint pen that's why it flows this way so it's a ballpoint pen and now you have answered more way more than this guy now if you want to add more in this exam you can see this pen can be used to write exams can be used to what to take notes in class can be used to work for documentation officially and then when this brilliant student is done seeing all this the last thing he's going to do is like this is a diagram of a pen and then the most excellent student will now see ah here is the cover here is the tube here is the hook of the pen now i ask you a simple question what is this and one student gave me a cheap answer, a pen. The other student gave me an answer that has both a diagram, both the uses of a pen, both the specific type of pen that I asked for. So I want you to be smart in the example like this. You don't leave anything in the exam. You make sure you give the examiner every single thing that you know. In the exam, they don't take away from you for knowing. They take away from you for not knowing. So make sure you give them every single thing and hold nothing back in your exams. The next thing I'm going to tell you about, and look at how to take an exam. The next thing I'm going to tell you about in an exam is make sure you draw when the question requires you to draw. And when you draw, make sure you draw and label. And when you draw and label, use pencils, of course. Label on one side so that the examiner can come and tick what they want to tick from your answer booklet the next thing i'll tell you about and this is probably the last thing is the need for writing clearly nobody expects you to write beautifully in the exam but we expect you to write clearly in the exam your handwriting must be bold enough so that the examiner does not need to strain himself to see your answers so people don't know the answer and you might just know some part of the answer but whatever you know make sure it is clear enough so that the examiner can see everything that you mean to write this way you would have covered a lot even without knowing so much in the exam by being clear by making sure you draw and answering the question accordingly in the right amount of detail by making sure you have the right energy to be able to think and produce the answer in the exam hall by following the instructions judiciously by having a timepiece and allocating your time properly by having an exam kit that will make you well prepared